Hello and welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. My name's Warren Shute and I'm here to, with you today on this beautiful sunny day and I thought I'd talk to you about overdraft rates and they're skyrocketing and what you need to do about it. This episode of The Money Planner is brought to you by IDLO, the price comparison site, helping you shop smarter. Okay, so we're back again. Overdraft rates. Typically in the past, banks have charged a fixed fee for an overdraft. So you get a daily or a weekly charge for the overdraft and it would range from say five pounds to nine pounds, depending on the bank. The FCA, the financial regulator, did a review of the banks and found that they were profiting from overdraft to the tune of 2.4 billion pounds a year. They felt this was unfair and they then banned that process of charging these fixed fees for overdrafts and they've asked or told the banks they need to revert to a different method and they've gone to interest rates. So they're now charging an interest rate for it. And the interest rates that they're charging, I have no idea how they've come up with it, but typically they're about 40%, I think 38 to 39 point something percent if you have good credit um, and if you have Poor credit is even higher. Now, who's this going to affect? I guess if you had a small overdraft, okay, in the past, and you were charged a fixed fee, you could quite easily calculate that fee, and that probably was quite a high percentage. And therefore, if you're going to a percent rate, which is 40%, you can just weigh off the differences and see which one was bet you were better off with. The one it's really going to affect, if you had a big overdraft, that fixed fee is likely to be a smaller percentage as, as a, a charge. Relative to the 40%, you're gonna be crippled. You know, going to these 40% interest rates is gonna be astronomical for most people. And if you only ever make the minimum payments on this, if you only sort of make the, you know, make sure that it's being traded, you're never, ever, ever gonna pay it off. So you're gonna to have to change how things operate. Otherwise, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Now. Let's just sort of be clear, there are different types of overdraft. There are your, there's your agreed overdraft and there's unagreed or unapproved overdraft. So we're talking really about approved, agreed overdrafts with your bank. Um, and some of you may only have 500 pounds, some of you may have a thousand or two and a half thousand. Some of you watching may have 20 plus thousand pounds. The largest I've ever seen is a hundred thousand pound um, overdraft. And they actually said it was unsecured, which really surprises me, but there you go, 100,000 pounds overdraft, imagine that. Um, and these interest rates are gonna skyrocket and they come into effect, um, I believe it's April, it could be March 1st, but April or March this year, 2020. Um, so if you've got an overdraft, you really start thinking about what are you gonna do about it? Because it, those interest rates, it's gonna cripple you and you're really gonna struggle to repay it off. Okay, so I talk about the same things pretty much about most of the time because these these systems, these processes are proven. I've been in financial planning 25 years this year. I've probably dealt with thousands of clients over those years and a proportion of those clients needed help sorting out their finances in respect of their debt. You know, we don't just deal with very wealthy individuals. Sometimes I'll work with clients and we'll do some financial coaching, counseling about how to get them out of debt. And really, if you've got a big overdraft, and you know, if you're talking big is relative term, big is relative to whatever you earn, if I'm honest. So, you know, a 20,000 pound overdraft to some people will be a snippet because they earn such a large amount of money. But a, a 2,000 pound overdraft will be astronomical to other people um, because of the level of income they've got coming in. So I don't really want to put numbers on it so much, but just make sure it's understand it's relative to your income. If it's big to you, it's big, that's all you need to do, uh, worry about. So there are some things that you can do to help yourself get straight before the, um, before the rate change comes in. Right, now let me go through these. The four steps, first, let's get organized. Literally in the 25 years I've been working with clients, getting financial clarity is the most important thing you can do. You really have to take control of the situation. Nobody is gonna take control of it for you. You can't rely on reasons, excuses that I'm not good with maths, I'm not good with numbers. You may not be. I do understand and appreciate some people find numbers and, and, and money particularly difficult to manage. 
but you've got to step up on this. You've got to try and learn and go along with it. There's plenty of resources which are free on my website, warrenshoot.com. So go there, you have to log in so we can register you and we can keep in touch with you. But once you get in there, there's lots of resources on there um, that you can pull on and download for free and use to help you get better. But financial clarity, okay, step one. Let's know what your alley is. Assets, liabilities, income and expenditure. Whether you earn a million pounds a year or whether you earn, I don't know, 200 pounds a week or a month, okay, whatever the extremes can be, I go through the same steps. Admittedly, I'll go deeper with some people, depending on what complexities they need, but we always start with assets, liabilities, and income and expenditure. I was meeting with a client today, very, very wealthy individual. We've got to start with your alley. I've got to know what your assets are, what your liabilities are, what income you have coming in now and over the years ahead, and what expenditure you expect now and over the years ahead. So we can plan that. And when you're watching this, you've got to do the same. On my website, there's a spreadsheet you can download. I think it's called Ali, and you put all your assets in there and all your liabilities, all the income and all the expenditure. But let's break that down a little bit. So look, assets. So let's go in there and have a look, see, have a look around what things could you sell or realize to cash to reduce your overdraft? You know, do you have some premium bonds lying around, even if it's like 25 or 50 pounds? Do you have some shares from a demutualization that you've never really thought about? Um, maybe you inherited something from somebody and you've just ignored it. You know, what can we do with that money to um, re sell it, realize it, and bring it down and to reduce your overdraft? Now, remember, in the money plan, my book, I said I want the first £1,000 held in reserve. So you put those in premium bonds or out of arm's reach. Anything over that, if you've got an overdraft at these sorts of rates, we've got to be selling them to pay off the overdraft and reduce it down. Okay, that's step one. Assets. Liabilities. Find out from your bank what the interest rate is going to go up to. Find out what it is now. Then put that into pounds terms. Let me show you how to do that. If your interest rate is 40%, 40, you do the, the value of your overdraft, you hit the multiply button, and then you put 0 0.4 equals. That is the annual rate of interest. They will charge you for having that. Now, you divide that number by 12. This is the monthly amount of interest you're going to pay. That's what you're going to pay each month to tread water, not to repay it off, but just to maintain the current value. It's a lot, isn't it? Okay, so let's say, for example, it's 38%. You get the value of your overdraft, you hit the multiply button on the keyboard, you do 0 0.38, or if it's 38 and a half, you do 0 0.385, hit the equals key. That's your annual interest cost for treading water. You hit the divide button by 12, that's the monthly amount. So you've taken it from a yearly figure down to a monthly amount. This is the amount of interest they're gonna charge you per month to tread water. It's eye-watering. It's a huge amount. It's almost half. Um, and that's why I'm deciding to do this video and podcast on it because I wrote a piece for the paper and it really shocked me at how high this interest rate is. So let's get clarity on what the interest rate you're paying now is or what the fees are and what it is yearly and what it is um, after the change. <clears throat> now, to look at it is what, what you're being charged now, you look at your fee, so you add up your fee. So whether you're charged a fixed fee per month, typically, let's say that fee, you multiply that by 12, so you get the yearly fee, and you divide that into a balance. Now for a lot of you, I would imagine the fee now is gonna be a lot less than it will be after the change. So, what other debts do you have? And what are the interest, of the, interest rates of those? Any loans, any cars, any higher purchase agreements, any credit card balances, that kind of thing. Okay, and now we need to try and make sure we're getting the best rate on all of these. I don't really want you to consolidate them and chuck them all together, but I want you to get the best rate of them. And I cover this in a lot more detail in the snowball repayment method, so I won't go into that, that in too much detail now, but basically, I want, to get, I want you to get the best rate you can. Um, then we've got to look at what income we've got coming in. So that's the I in Ali. So what's your income? Can you earn more money? Can you work overtime? Can you do um, any work after work? Can you get a side hustle working online or something? Now, if you're gonna do other work, I've been told by people, you've gotta just check with your employer, make sure they're happy with it. But really, I can't really see an employer saying no to you working a little bit more, um, either with them or with somebody else. But see what other work you have coming in. Now, some of you, you're a carer, or you're looking after children, or you just don't have the time. Physically, it's not possible, and I respect that. I really do. I, I am, my heart goes out to you people more than anyone else because you are not restricted by your desire but by your commitments. 
And I understand that. So go to a website called Entitled To, Entitled To, T O at the end, dot co UK, put all your details in there. Now I would do this for even some wealthy, wealthy clients of ours, just to make sure that there aren't any benefits that they are genuinely legally entitled to. Because if you are entitled to them, it's gonna help you out of a sticky situation, then perhaps you should go ahead and do it. So go, go and check that out and make sure you got that and have a look at other ways you can boost your income. Now a great way you can boost your income is using things like um, Top Cashback or Quidco. Now these are sites that will pay you a cashback when you make a purchase. I've mentioned them many times before, I mentioned them in my book. I think there are fantastic ways. If you, you're gonna have to shop anyway, you might as well use these sites, okay? That's income. Then we come on to expenditure. <laughs> and expenditure is basically what money goes out. Now, this is the easiest win for you, the easiest way that you can free up some extra cash. And remember, the outcome is free up extra cash is to repay it off onto the mortgage, uh, onto the overdraft. So we're looking at expenditure. I want you to go through all your expenditure items and say, do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience for less? And make sure you really drive that down as much as you can. Now, with your fixed expenditure, you might go to um, comparison websites um, to look at if you can get a change of gas, your electricity, um, you, utilities, other utilities, your uh, mobile phone bill, your broadband, that kind of thing. I want you to try and get all of your fixed overheads, the running costs of the house, to be no more than 50%, that's five zero, of your monthly income. Okay, so say that again. I want you to get all of your running costs of your house, your fixed overheads, to be no more than 50%, five, five zero, of your net take home income. And there's a reason behind that. What we're trying to do is put some parameters in place so you don't overextend yourself too much. The second one is your variable spending. Now this is the money which we call WAM. We get you to pay every week on a Wednesday into a separate account or cash and you spend that separately. That money, I want you to be no more than 30%, three zero, of your monthly take home pay, okay? So it's roughly seven and a half percent a week. You know, I'm not gonna go into the detail, but it's about 1% a day. That's roughly where you're sort of sitting at. All you simply do is look at 30%, three zero, of your monthly take home pay, you divide it by four, and you transfer that into a separate account every week, and that's the only money you spend variably, either cash or your debit card, your Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever your method of payment is. That's the only payment you pay. Now, what that's got to cover, it's got to cover your fuel in your car, your transportation, your grocery shopping. It's got to cover all those, your haircuts, your going out on the weekend, that kind of thing. Okay, anything variable. Now, it would make sense to get this to spread as far as we can, wouldn't it? Because obviously we've got lots of expenditure on that. So some of the things you can do is there's a great site called Idealo. Idealo is literally one of my favorite sites because it finds you the cheapest price on an item across the web. Now, I use this regularly. My children use this site. You know, so if there's something you need to buy or want to buy, you type it into Idealo, it will search the web and it'll find you the best price you can out there on the internet. Um, the other things you can look at are um, Honey. Now, Honey, um, and I think the website's Join Honey. Honey is a site that gives you coupons. So it does it automatically. You go to a site and it'll bring up a discount coupon so you get a reduction on the price that way. Um, also, if you're an employed individual, go and speak to your HR department because so many, particularly the larger corporations, have these buying groups that you can join and you can get discounts on things or cashbacks on such things. Now, I'm not an employed by a big company, but I'm a member of the CISI, the Chartered Institute for Securities Investments, and they have a associate group, group whereas I can get um, a discount on Apple products, Microsoft products, that kind of thing. Um, and it's really, really good. What you're doing is you're making your bucks go further, your pounds spread further, okay? Now, if you think about it, we've done 50 for the household bills, 30 for your variable spending. How much is left, guys? This is a maths question. 50 plus 30, 80, so 20 percent left. With the 20% remaining, this is the money I want you to use to prioritize first saving up a thousand pounds. Make sure you've got some cash in the bank, okay? And then after that, I want you to use it to repay the overdraft, or in this example, the overdraft. Let's get rid of the overdraft. And you just simply put it into that account best you can. Now, th some things you can do to help you, help yourself uh, manage this process. And the first thing is stop using the account with the overdraft on it. 
becomes very messy, doesn't it? Your overdraft is there, your salary, your income goes into it, and you don't really know where you are, and then before you know it, you end a month there, and you're still at the same level of balance. If you have your income paid into a separate account, and you start this process, 50, 30, 20, and that 20 gets transferred into your overdraft every month, let's hope it's more than the 1 12th of the 40% they're gonna charge you as interest, because if it's not, all you're doing is just covering the interest charge, but then the excess, the capital, will go to reduce the, the borrowing. But by doing it that way, at least you know what's going into there and you'll start repaying it a little bit further. Um, and finally, one of the things you can look at doing, and I don't encourage this because I don't believe in consolidating debts together, and I don't really like swapping one debt for another. Now, one thing I would not do is take your overdraft and remortgage your house and secure it against your home. Okay, so it's really clear about that. I know the arguments and what you're gonna to say to me, but I do not recommend that you take a mortgage or remortgage, raise equity, and then consolidate your debts. Okay, it's too risky. You know, if that then, if you lose your job, you lose your house. And if it, if it was that extra debt that cost you that risk, it's just not worth it. If you um, default on unsecured debt, worst case you get is the bailiffs coming at your door or the, the CCJ. I know that's scary, but it's not a repossession of your house. <clears throat> so one thing you could do is if this debt is large and the interest rate is going to 40%, it's going to take you some period of time before you repay it. You could simply um, go and arrange a personal loan to repay this debt. Now, there's some caveats I want you to take on board here. One of them is do not take the loan out for any longer than is absolutely necessary. Um, I really want you to get this loan paid off in full as quickly as possible. So for example, if you've got an overdraft that you ordinarily by extra overpayments will be paid off in say three or five, let's say, say five years, what is the point in you taking a loan out over six, seven, eight years just to keep the monthly payment down? Really what your outcome is is to be debt free, completely debt free, mortgage as well. <clears throat> so take a loan out, but over a shorter period possible for the lowest interest rate possible. And there's plenty of comparison sites out there that you can go to to search around and get the best rate. Um, but really, really consider whether you need to do that. When if you look at your 20% of your net take home pay being applied to the overdraft, have a look at how long that's gonna take you to repay it. Because sometimes having it there is a burning desire to make sure it's gone. And then finally, have a house sale, have a look around the house, what can you offload to make sure you repay this overdraft as fast as you can? Um, is it fair? Is it right? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Hey, look, you borrow money. It should be charged at a fair and reasonable rate. And if the rate's gone from a modest rate to an astronomical rate, that's not really fair. But it's not our money, is it? it's their money. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is tied up in the small print and it's beyond quite often so even someone qualified like me to really understand it on first reading you've got to really delve in there so if you're not if money isn't your profession then i completely understand how easy it is to get yourself into trouble financially in these scenarios so i am on your side i promise you and that's why i say to you do not take any credit out period do not borrow to spend as income you'll just get yourself into a mess and let's restrict our spending in those areas, 50% of our net take home pay to run our house. And that covers everything to do with our house, or our direct debits, all our standing orders, that kind of thing. And then in addition to that, we have 30% to cover our variable spending, which will include our food shopping, our petrol, our car, our going out, that kind of thing. And that leaves us 20% to initially get debt free. And then once you're debt free, we're gonna then turbocharge our retirement and focus it on investing for the future. But before you do any of that, before you start looking at investing, before you start looking at buying ICEs and such like, um, we've really got to get debt free and we've got to get our £1,000 buffer in there because this debt retirement might take us, sorry, debt repayment might take us a number of years. We need a buffer there. Okay, so £1,000 in the premium bonds out of the way and then every other penny we were able to get, any bonuses, that kind of thing throw it on the unsecured debt. Let's get unsecured debt free as quickly as you can. And you might even want to make this um, a fun game. So one of the things you can do, and I got this idea from a guy called Kevin Lay, who's an amazing guy, um, and he did it with a thing called Losing Your Marbles, which I think is great. And he has two jars, one jar um, full of marbles, and then 
each marble would represent, for example, um, an amount of debt. So it could be a hundred pounds for the day, it could be 10 pounds a day, it could be a thousand pounds a day, depending on how much debt you've got. So you have all these marbles in one jar and you have these on complete display. And one jar will be your debt and one, jet will be de uh, one jar will be freedom. And you literally, every time you make a repayment, you take a, a marble out of one jar and put it in the other. So for example, let's give you an example. Let's say I've got a thousand pounds worth of debt. Okay, I might, for example, have um, 10, 10 um, marbles in a jar. Okay, it'd be nice if I had a thousand, that'd be really good. But let's say I've got 10, we could have, a, let's say 10, so each marble's a hundred pounds. And every time I repaid a, a hundred pounds worth of debt, I would take one marble out of one jar and pop it in the other. So eventually you'll see those 10 marbles come down uh, in size and they're all going across each other's sides, so making yourself closer to freedom. That's what we call a, a visual and kinesthetic anchor or process that we can see we're engaged in it. Because one of the things people struggle with money so much is so abstract. You know, when was the last time we actually touched paper money and start paying it over and counting coins and things like that? Everything these days is done online on spreadsheets, um, sometimes on paper and pen. And that's why we have no emotional attachment to money. Um, you know, when I go and buy things, I double tap my watch or my phone, you know, pay by Apple Pay. Um, I might have to get a card out and pay by my debit card. Um, you know, but pretty much there's no emotional attachment there. Um, I remember meeting with an accountant once and um, he literally hand wrote every single expenditure item he made every week um, or certainly every month uh, in a book. When I looked through it, he had pages of pages. And he explained to me, he said, there's no emotional attachment to spending plastic. There is nothing there, so it doesn't feel anything. But when he writes it out, there's a kinesthetic process and he sees it, he reads it and it reiterates it and then realizes how, how much money he's spending. If we all did that every week, that would really tie us to our expenditure. Now, I don't do that, so I don't tell people to do that. I only tell people to do things that I have either done myself or I recommend to my clients or I, I do. <clears throat> but um, certainly having something else in there. But the jar, uh, marbles and the jar um, uh, method or idea is um, something I came across um, a few months ago, and I really like it. I think it's fantastic. So definitely worth recommending you do that. So if you've got a lot of debt, or maybe it's your overdraft, and you call it overdraft on one, and overdraft or freedom on the other one, a nice word. Um, try not to use a negative, um, use a, a positive word. So don't put um, repay debt. Try and put freedom or um, uh, whatever you want to achieve once you've paid off a holiday or um, change jobs, something like that. Something that inspire, inspires you because you're more motivated to it. Put it somewhere where you see it, so you're inspired to do it, and then literally every time you make a payment, and make 200 pounds this month, take two marbles out and pop them on the other side, and then the outcome is to see them all over uh, into the other side. I think it's great, I think it's a really good idea. So, um, hey, we've got off track a little bit, but let me just wrap up. Overdraft rates are going from a fixed pounds amount um, up to, for most high street banks, skyrocketing to 40%. So I include all high street banks in there, I think. Um, so have a Google, see what yours are, so make sure you have clarity. Let's get organized, financial organization. Let's do your alley, see what assets we've got, have a look. Is there anything can be realized to pay that overdraft down? Let's look at our liabilities. Let's understand what our interest rate is. Let's look at other debts that we've got and let's organize them. And there's a spreadsheet online, warranty.com, called the Snowball Calculator. Let's look at our income, see if we're entitled to any other income. Go onto that website, entitled2.co.uk. Um, and let's look at our expenditure. List it all down, every single bit of expenditure, just for the one month, I have a spreadsheet for mine. Do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience for less? Something that I recommend everyone, do, everyone does at the beginning of the year anyway. Um, certainly things like utilities, go online, shop and get those discounted. Let's limit our household payments to no more than 50%, that's five zero of your take home pay. And let's limit our variable expenditure to no more then 30%, that's three zero of our take home pay. And remember, our variable expenditure covers everything variable once we get our debit card out or our Apple Pay or Google Pay. So it's gonna include our fuel, our grocery shopping, our getting our hair done, our coffees at the coffee shop, our meetings with friends, our Friday night party night, a bottle of wine on Sunday afternoon, <coughs> that kind of thing, anything variable. That should leave you 20% left over. And with that 20% left over, I need you to pay it onto the overdraft. And to keep this nice and clean, nice and separate, have a separate account that your salary goes in. And do not use your overdraft account. So do not have an overdraft on the next account. You will be organized. You will know where your money's going. You don't need it. And pay that money on there. Once that's gone, fantastic. Make sure you then chip away all the other unsecured debts. Do it. And to give you a visual kinesthetic barometer of this, so you keep in touch with it, 
have two jars somewhere simple for you can see um, and you maybe go past regularly. So maybe in the kitchen or in your bedroom, wherever it might be. Some people more private, it's not one in their bedroom. Have a marble per 100 pounds or 50 pounds or 10 pounds that you repay. Just make sure you know what it is. And every time you repay that, move those marbles from one jar to the next. So eventually your um, original jar of all the marbles in is gonna be empty, meaning your overdraft is repaid. And your second jar will have all the marbles in it, which means you are now financially free for at least your overdraft. My name's Warren Shute. This has been Financial Education for the Nation. Please join me on the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you, whatever your preference is, certainly on YouTube. And uh, if you have any questions, please message me. I look forward to hearing from you and I am responding to all the messages myself because I enjoy it. This is great. Have a great day and until next time, take care.